guys, it's Matt and Iggy. We got some ZL1 action, fifth gen on the dyno tonight. So this car, kind of saw a little preview in it, of it in the last video here. Let me shut these fans off. Just some kind of in between runs. And it looks a little, uh, just let me get this key, sorry. I'm like in the middle of stuff here. <laughs> Way to start the video, sorry. All right, this is a 2014 ZL1. Now this car is getting some custom body, a full custom body. Um, so it looks a little skeletonized right now, but that's because it's getting custom fenders and, and a bunch of other stuff. So I won't get into that right now, maybe in a later, later video. But I wanted to use this video to kind of show our stage two LSA, you know, so ZL1 and CTSV, uh, V2, so LSA stuff. So this is our stage two package for an LSA. Um, now within our stage two package, you can go two different camshaft options. I know it gets a little confusing when we talk stages, but Nikki was one of the first, or the first, to talk stages way back, way, way back in the 60s. So we stick with that, and I know everybody has stages of everything, but... This is our stage two package, LSA. So that means stage two means we're into the engine, um, into the valve train, not into the bottom end or rotating assembly, but into the valve train. And this car has our stage one cam. So with, you know, because we're going stage two, that means we're into the valve train, replacing the camshaft. And then we have two options for camshafts. Well, we actually have multiple options, but our most popular is our stage one and stage two cams. You get into bubble, our stage two, it starts to get, the streetability starts to get a little shaky. So. This is our smaller cam. Headers, of course, our American Racing, two inch. This car, we got a big throttle body, ported inlet that I poured out to accept the 102, or the 103, I should say, because this is a K-Tech, and a Rotofat Big Gulp. So, this is a pretty awesome package when it comes to just some, you know, doing some engine, a little bit of engine work, and, gains you get out of this out of this package so um, this supercharger case itself is not ported just the inlet to you know the inlets ported and then it's I have to cut quite a bit of material out of the entryway of the snout to accept that bigger throttle blade and to blend it you know there's only so much you can do but to blend that big diameter into the snout so uh, 160 thermostat uh, catch can and this is just connection pipes to the stock catback. So I'm in the middle of tuning this. Oh, and I always, I always forget something. Pulleys. So we got a uh, Lingenfelter 255 upper, and we got an ATI balancer with a 917 lower. So I'm seeing about 14 pounds, just touching 14 pounds of boost on this, which is pretty typical with this pulley combination. And this, this setup here, when you port the inlet, big throttle body, and the five inch intake is worth a pound of boost over a, an unported inlet stock throttle body and a four inch cold air. It's a, it's a full pound of boost we see, so it's pretty typical. Um, so yeah, I'm in the middle of tuning. I just flashed a tune in, I picked up the camera here and let's, let's just go along for the ride here for this next pull. So this is where I'm at so far. I was getting my, again, I always go air fuel first, kind of set the timing conservative. Go air fuel, get the air fuel dialed in, then start laying in some timing. So I just did that, I just, I had to trim the air fuels a little richer, just another percent on the top. I just flashed that, that file in, so you can see, here's where I was just at with that dynograph, and you can see I was a little lean, Pretty good in the mid-range, a little in down here. You see I picked up a little knock, so I actually took a little timing out here. I added some fuel here, and I added some fuel up here. So you can see at the top there, 199 kPa. So yeah, we're, we're over 14 PSI here at the top. So, and I just added some time. You can see how flat my timing is. Of course, I had a conservative curve in for now, again. So I just added like a degree and a half. Maybe it, it might see another two degrees up top here, so I was, 
This usually I end up at 93. I usually end up at, in the low 20s, 22, 23, with the big throttle body and five inch cold air with that extra pound of boost we see. Um, so yeah, let's get this thing spun up. Get this, get done. The temperature's normalized here, which I can do easily with this load control on this dyno. So I got my pen in here, I can hit this load control and I can set the load up a little bit and load the tires and hit the coolant temps up pretty quick, so. see what we got here all right I still need to add more timing but I might add a little more fuel but now my knock sensors are flat and because my timing change didn't do a whole lot we're sitting right about the same so just <laughs> we'll call that 700 looks like I can take this to seven with that cam so let me make some changes and flash that in and we'll do another pull all right guys two loaded car warmed back up we're at 187 on the coolant tank like we picked up a little bit but I keep adding a little I keep adding fuel on the airflow table on the mass airflow table which increases my air mass which then reduces my timing so I only got about a half a degree there but again I'm trying to get my air fuel ratio right first now I'm looking where I, that's well, that's what I want to see for air fuel ratio so I like running these LSAs when we're leaning on them like this on pump gas a 93 octane right at 0.8 lambda maybe just dipping 0.79 i know that sounds rich but typically you can typically on the lsas push them a little richer and these lsas because they're low compression they really like timing they just love timing so every if, if you lose three four five horsepower going a couple tenths richer but that allows you to run another degree of timing. The degree of timing is worth like 10 or 15 horsepower. So it's always worth it to, to push a little richer to try to get that extra degree out of it. So 
There I hit 21 degrees. We're still going to be able to put more in it. You can see the knock sensors. Now I, I'll tune these. The knock sensing on these LSAs is very accurate, and I'll tune them right up against the knock sensors and then dial it back just a smidge. So, so yeah, I'm going to add some more timing. I'm probably going to add a little bit probably just across the board so this kind of ramps in quicker so it doesn't kind of ramp up it ramps in sooner and I'm, I want to bring this up so that was 21 I think I'm gonna add at least a degree and a half so you can see we that added timing made a little bit more but I'm gonna raise the rev limiter up too I think I got it in 6900 this thing wants to keep RPM in too so we're gonna bump that up to 71 72 so I think the torque this is about where the torque is gonna sit I'm gonna try adding a little more but like I said that little bit of knock on the first graph I had the first one I showed you that was around the peak torque and I think that's about it so all right so I'm gonna again I'll make some changes load it up and we'll we'll spin up another run Take that back out. See the knock, knock sensor just picked up a little bit there. But again, that was like right at peak torque. So looks like I'll have to have, again, usually this is how these end up, but I always play with every car individually because every car is a little different. Usually you end up with a pretty, on these LSAs, you end up with the cammed LSAs, you have a pretty progressive timing ramp or just kind of ramps up, nice steady ramp the whole way. So. So that was a degree and a half of timing. So yeah, next tune, I'll take this out. My air fuel still looks good. Might be trailing a little lean at the top. I raised, because I did raise the rev limit a couple hundred RPM and I took it up into a little uncharted territory where I wasn't had, hadn't hit before. So it's airflow. See, I'm just touching 10,000 there at the top, right? I didn't get to that spot before, so I gotta add a little bit of, little bit of uh, meat in the math curve up top, maybe another uh, percent. So, but glancing at the dyno graph, it looks like that degree and a half of timing. Remember how I said LSA is like timing? That was a degree and a half of timing, gained us almost 20 at the wheels. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna add another degree and see what happens. So, let me do that. I'll make that change and I'll maybe clear off some of these other runs here. So, we'll start, we'll just start with this one and. We'll see if we can uh, keep making more power. I think that's gonna be it. I'm not gonna push the timing any harder than that, just based on previous, a lot, a lot, a lot of previous LSAs I've done. I've done a lot of LSA tuning, so. 
but this is looking really nice. Just barely tickled the knock sensors there, 52. But you can kind of see how the, the timing curve is kind of starting to take shape of what, what it likes. You know, kind of low bottom end and then and then on the top end where the VE starts, where this air mass starts to drop off, it wants, it wants more timing. So air fuel is where I want it. Looks like it stayed nice and flat. 0 0.8, 0 0.8, just touching 0.81, but that's right almost to the limiter. So the rest of the air fuel curve looks really nice. You can see that's 0 0.79, 0 0.8, 0 0.81, 0 0.8, yeah. So it's hovering right where I want it. So, and you can see we're touching we're touching 15 pounds with this car. Now it is it is kind of chilly in the shop right now, so um, I got the fans running, you know, with the air circulating through, and it's it's a 30 degree day here, so the shop's like 50 degrees. So so the boost, you know, we're gonna see a little more boost on a cooler versus when it's 85 and humid in the shop. You know, we're probably only seeing 195, 100, yeah. About 14 pounds. We're, yeah, we're almost. We're just. We're almost touching 15 pounds here, getting near it. So, but I got the limiter in at 7,100. So that was right at 7,000. I took it to. So now we could take it higher, but with these stage one cams, you can see how the boost starts to tail up like this. We're really starting to push up against where the camshaft is starting to kind of run out of steam. So. And on, again, on 93 octane, I don't want to push it too hard. If we were on E85, I'd rev this thing out to 7,300, and we could put another three degrees of timing at it and make another 50 horsepower. But this isn't that car, so this is looking really good for the wide open throttle stuff. Let's. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit these fans. Cause they're loud and they howl. I'll leave the exhaust fans running, but check that out. It's looking really nice. So, like I said, I said we weren't going to make any more torque. The car, the IATs cooled off a little bit for that run. Cause I ran and did something else for about 15 minutes. And came back to it. I brought the coolant temperatures and the oil temperatures and everything all back up, but the blower was a little bit cooler. This 719 run, that was that was you know back to back. I was I was shutting the camera off, making a change, turning the camera back on, warming it back up, and so the blower was getting kind of hot. So this was a little bit of a cooler of a run where the IETs were 15, 20 degrees cooler than than the blue run, but obviously the timing did something on the top end too so yeah that's that's nice and strong for a stick shift I, I I don't know if you guys noticed in the video but it is what is manual transmission so um, the manuals will on the ZL1s will be about 20 wheel higher than the automatics so an automatic package we'd be yeah seven you know in the 17s so yeah, this is a really strong package for just a pump gas only, and I get you can, you know, and we do E85, and I get you water methane and all that other jazz, but this, uh, yeah, you can see powers. It's peaking at 6,700, so yeah. There's not really any reason to have to rev it off. So you can see, so keep in mind what I just showed you on the data logger, how the boost is tailing up, but look at what the power is doing. It's falling off. So that's just, you know, that's where you, if you're really after high RPM or even like a drag race application, you, you want to go, you, you do want to go with the bigger cam. But we get into the bigger cam and it, the bigger cam still drives nice. You start to lose a little bit of drivability down on the bottom coming off a stop. And, but it does make a lot more power up on top. You add another six degrees of intake duration and over what this is. Stage two cam is about yeah five six degrees bigger than the stage one cam, and just that little bit adds quite a bit on the top. So this is looking good. So yeah, thanks for coming along with kind of a little tuning session with me on an LSA. Um, like I said, I've done a lot of LSAs, and you do enough of them, you do I don't know a hundred of them, maybe more. 
over the years and start to, you know, I don't think we did five, six pulls on that car to get it dialed in, but I know where they need to be and um, where they end up. So. so you can see guys, we got a full shop too. I try to get more videos out, but man, we got so much work to do. That's that vet I just finished up. Check this thing out. 69 Camaro LT4. It's pretty sweet. This will be on the dyno eventually. Guy just dropped it off with us so we can finish up some mechanicals on it. And it's kind of a skeleton too, but the color is just insane. It's a house of colors type of deal. So mini tub. Tramic trans. Yeah. That whole pro touring thing, Willwood brakes, foil overs. Catalina we just got in. GTO we just got in. And all the other stuff. We got a 427 car down there, Z01, we got a SS heads cam we're doing. Had Stefano Z01 that we're gotta finish up a five inch cold air on. It's just kind of it's the owner's car and it's like my car. It's hard to get time to do all that stuff. So anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on. Thanks for watching, guys. Check back to the channel for more videos, and uh, talk to you later.